name is Kathleen Gamer. Welcome back to PCM 24 Yeti episode number four. We're in the national championships. Benin, a, a country we just ran the time trial for where we had a slight chance, was Fuseni. Fus oh, Fuseni gets a minus five draw. Uh, his expected was a minus two. He's got low motivation. But the, the good news with circumstances like this, we actually have a very, very easy chance of getting a top two. The reason being is it's us, it's us against everyone. But the everyone is a team that has eight riders. They're not going to see the reality that we don't stand a chance. They're going to see that they've got a rider in the breakaway and go, hey, we're going to win a stage. And they're not going to ride behind. At least that's what I expect. Right now we do have this guy riding hard to, to help get away. We'll see if it actually works. For now, they're not just letting us get away, so... Maybe just maybe. For me, circumstantially, if it's just two of us getting away and we do go get a top two, regardless win or lose, I need to be beating at least three other riders head to head. I need to be in a, at least a group of four to consider it worthy. So if they're smart, he makes us work hard, he tires us out, the other seven catch up and blow past us and leave the two of us behind and oops he hops in the car and he's done and i ride solo and their seven riders go off to claim a one two three four five six seven if it were me with eight riders versus one that's what i would do or you know just ride with the guy but make sure that they lose <laughs> i'd be polite 112k left to go fuseni's already the weakest rider here and of their eight they're bad, too. They're just not as bad as Fuseni. None of them. And only one of them is... Yeah, not good, but... Adequate? Uh, what's, what's the word for less than bad, but definitely not okay? They've got one rider who is got a... Oh, we're out to two and a half minutes. We are out to two and a half minutes. And we are going to back off. Here is my ruling... The Peloton has pulled us back. We pulled it back out again. They are pulling us back rapidly. Those seven are still in play. This is not some done deal runaway victory. That as well, combined with Lukasu. Lukasu is their second best rider. So we are not facing their weakest guy in the breakaway. We're facing their second best guy, a guy who a 59 sprint and 61 acceleration is significantly stronger than Fuseni, especially today. And they've dropped a rider. They have dropped a rider, so now there's just six chasing, but at the same time, there's only a two-minute advantage. If we win this one, oh, it's going to count. It is going to count. I, I think we've got enough of a competition on our hands. Doesn't look great for Fuseni, especially with this uh, minus five race day condition at a one minute advantage, but it does, it is just five chasing now. And it's together, it's seven riders. Uh, there's no reason for me to ride, but there is a reason to chase Sagbo. There's the guy, 61-61. No, they have two guys over 60 then, I missed him. Uh, it should be Sojeti. Yeah, Sojeti is 62-63. So actually, we had the third rider, Lakasu, and Sagbo is the second. If he goes away, it's an automatic win. These guys won't ride. There's no reason for them. So I need to be in the breakaway to have any chance. We are just 19 kilometers from the finish. Let's hope that they don't chase. Oh, they do. Of course they do. This is going to be uh, really challenging from here to do something, which is exactly why this would count. This would absolutely count. We've got to catch that guy. Otherwise, he literally rides away. So it's up to me for these last 15 kilometers to beat these six riders head to head. Not up for me to cooperate. We have a breakaway rider, right? That's, that's the obvious. That's the obvious. We have to keep him close enough to beat that guy and tire that guy out and at the same time not you know die myself i can't go get water right now i don't need it it's okay it's 11k 
This is the true scenario that makes perfect sense for the game's normal mechanic of you versus everybody. He's out to 44 seconds. He's pushing, he's pulling away. And nobody's going to ride with me. And attacking them is not going to do any good either. They have plenty of energy. I I'm literally going to just have to beat them head to head. Okay, 5k. I stabilize. No, I didn't even really stabilize the gap. He's pulling away. 5k. Yeah, this is... This is going to be a failure, folks, but we are trying. It's going to be a top 10 anyway. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we finish 7th or maybe 6th, 3k. Here they come. They're sprinting. They are sprinting, but it's already inside the final kilometer, and I've got no red bar. We're just saving that last little bit. Uh, it's a top 5. Sogbo's won. They played it tactical, and they're going to sweep the top four. I finish in the middle of their group. Eight riders. We beat four of them. That was that was legit competition. That's what I'm looking for in some of these other races. The real problem being there that that entire group was on one team. They played that smart. They went into the break. They, they let that happen. They tired me out a little bit. But then they actually pulled it back, knowing that they could win with others this time it might be one versus 12 which is certainly harder than one versus eight but at the same time we're set up in a much much better fashion and it would certainly count under the circumstances that group just ahead of us is the peloton it's nine riders who are a lap behind now the scary thing is they were like half an hour ahead down to 19 minutes they're definitely coming back at us but you can see at the moment they're they're not actually gaining any ground it's the breakaway now each team is represented hence the the idea that they let it go they let us get to such a gap we haven't had to work hard so i'm at full strength we've got just 31k left there is undulation here we've got uh two and a half more laps to go of the three riders that are here, two of them are not th threatening. Treshkowski, a 56 mountain, is his greatest strength. Semenovsky, 58 flat, is his greatest strength. But this is the one that I worry about. His teammates. So that means he's got somebody to lead him out. Mid 60s, a 63 sprint and a uh, 63 flat and a 65 sprint. And Domovsky. Well, at least we didn't get a minus five. He was supposed to have a plus two draw today, though, so he does have a minus two draw. Two races in a row, we've had a pretty nasty draw as far as things come. Uh, 52 mountain, 53 sprint, 52 flat. Like, not looking great. Not looking great for the possibility of beating these guys head to head. They, by the way, are starting to work a little bit harder, and we need to step it up to uh, match that. I've been the one who's worked the hardest, but not worked hard to ensure that we got away from that group because those nine behind are not a threat to them it's their teammates for me it's the exact opposite making sure that they don't come back we've now guaranteed a top four or you would think as the gap seems to be holding in about 20 minutes yeah we've guaranteed a top four now i was worried there for a little bit because like i said they pulled back 10 the minutes pretty quickly on us as our group before has stepped it up from about a 40 effort to a 60 effort. It's definitely look a little bit better. But look who's not working. He doesn't want to relay because he's got a teammate to relay for him. He's going to be tough to beat. He's going to be really tough to beat. Well, really any of them are going to be tough to beat with Domofsky's, uh capabilities. I'm not going to catch these guys out and attack successfully. I've, I've really got to just hope that uh, when it comes down to that sprint... I can time it better. It is a climb. I'm wondering if attacking at the base. Nobody's a strong climber. A 56 is the best anybody's got. got. That might line. actually be my, my best chance, is to attack right at the base of the climb. And then just 99, never mind the red bar, just flat out climb as fast as we can. 12k out? No, it's 12k out. Oh, here we go. It's coming. There They're trying to ditch me. To well, and that's the red team. Right? They know the circumstances. Cat and Mouse has begun, folks. Cat and Mouse has begun. 8.9k. I'm going to gel early. Like I said, I think I want to hit the climb. The climb is like 5%. None of us are good climbers. 
we go. Can I even get separation? <laughs> wow, that's one attack that's going to leave a good few in its way. Yeah, I have. Eight seconds of separation. Five kilometers remaining. 4k. Now nobody wants to work. Again, so back off. Attack is lost. The group has to break apart. 3.8k. Now this is about trying to recover some red bar for the final push, I suppose. Oh, here comes an attack. There's Kowski. And it's much too early. Now it's just flat out attacking all the way to the finish line. Simonovsky, come on, run out of that red bar. Oh, come on. Already sprinting. We're going to be fourth out of four, aren't we? Well, there goes the favorite. No, nah, we'll get we'll get a podium anyway, but it's solo win the Petrovsky well was much too strong. Treskowski, we grabbed third with Domovsky. Decent performance yet again, but not a win yet again. Next up for us is Angola. It was looking like one of those massive breakaway victories, one that wouldn't count because there's only one other writer with me. But here's the thing about the opposition. We do have this rider riding with us, and it is creating a certain circumstance, but when we get back to the group, there's one unique element, and that is a single rider who you can see when he can. He makes a big acceleration and rides for a while by himself. He's also attacked the group and tried to break away, but unlike letting me go, they're not so interested in letting him go. And so... Well, he's not interested in letting us go. It's this weird circumstance. And for a little bit there, it looked like we had a legitimate race on our hands with those seven chasers. Something that would have counted. But it looks like he has failed in his attempt to, to do anything. We're down to 18k. Oh, and Free Air has punctured, uh, which I've already punctured in this race also. And with 16k to go, can I keep him away? No, he is racing full gas, but we can hurt him pretty heavily by making him race full gas for a while to get here. Remember, we are on gravel for this one, so it is different circumstances. But now he doesn't want to contribute. Uh, I want to kind of push this thing to the limit because it's only 10k left. Some fatigue for him is an opportunity for us. Oh, there's my second puncture of this one. And now he's the one. Look look how he's put his foot down. He is racing hard, 49 seconds ahead of us. Okay, well, this race is absolutely coming down to the share of punctures. My second of the day. Yeah, look, he he is in full attack, but it's 3K. It's 3K from the finish. He's going to win. He's going to win because of that puncture. Congratulations. He, he has. We did not make it back. And Chinguai, the other guy, has managed to attack the group, but you can see how they are working together as a team to pull him back. Just 4k. Can they prevent him from getting a podium? Final kilometer for them. Here comes their sprint. Can they overtake him? No, he's going to hold them off. As of right now, sponsorships, and in particular your objectives, appear to be bugged. But result visibility seven objective was visibility one we did get credit that was angola that was the national championship there so it did pass um this one just says failed we we know we didn't fail it but it says fail well anyway there's one more before we get into the traditional final day of july offer that would come in sponsorship wise right now we sit on that 95 percent evaluation things are good with that but i hear even when you do well, you tend to get an offer significantly less to stick with your sponsor than to select a new one. We'll see how things go. But right now, what I'm thinking is if we do get substantially less, as long as it's basically a decrease on what we have now, uh, I will go into the database editor, editor after the fact, change it, manipulate it. I, I would like to hang on to our, our sponsor. It's part of the series. It's a big part of the series. We're going to have minimum 804000 for the coming year. And what I'm planning to do right now 
is we, we get lots of offers. And from those offers, well, it doesn't show me what we have now. Uh, the first few were in the 800,000 range, and then we really started to pick up our evaluation. So I think the fourth one was uh, about 910,000. What I'm planning on doing is taking not the best offer that we get on a yearly basis, but I think taking the fifth offer. That's definitely not the top end, but it's a good evaluation and it really paves the way for where we're at. So looking at the offers that we have pending right now, there's 962,000, 938,000, 929. I think the fifth highest offer we've had so far was that one that was about 910, uh, just coming in above the 905 that we had here. So at, at this stage, if it does turn out to be bugged and it's complicated, I will go in and alter it to 910,000. We're on to the Iranian National Championship and the 16 riders in the peloton, unlike our previous races, is an incredibly diverse group. There's about six teams represented in this race. But I've managed to get into the breakaway of four riders and we are on the verge of lapping these guys 10 and a half minutes ahead with 46k to go, making it look pretty dang likely that we are going to be able to pull off the victory. But, as always, we have a very, very weak rider compared to those around us, but the field of 20 across the board is pretty weak itself. They're just a little stronger than Mohammadi, but mohammadi has got a minus three today. That's really not helping, and that's three straight races with either a minus two or a minus three draw. Rough go on that part. The Peloton's definitely pulling us back at the moment. They've gotten away from the almost getting lapped scenario and are coming pretty quickly at us, but with just 26k to go, I doubt that they are going to get close enough to compete with us. This is coming down to those riders that are not part of the two teams that are represented with me. The big worry is that there's two riders from the same team, the same scenario that we went through last time, but we've got a, a large enough field, we've got a competitive enough one here that a win would do it. So, let's see what we can do. 15k to go. Not a huge effort here, and so hopefully, but it's also not been an easy race. I would love to see one of these riders fall off and be tired, but we're, we're down to 10k to go. We're going to start to slow this down, get organized. A little bit of undulation here, but not much, and we're about to crest. We hit this intersection, and that's it. It's downhill from there to the finish, just 7k. Everyone's still contributing. That's definitely helping that... There's no attacks coming right now. We've got to start to uh, worry about that. 4K to go. 3K to go. Slowing it down. 3K. Ah, nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to work. 2K. Okay, we're starting to put our foot down. This gets us out front at least, but how long can we hold these guys off inside 1K? They are not sprinting very well. There's a little uphill swing. Come on, Mohammedy, you took the wrong line. Took the outside line. And he's going to be fourth. The red bar is running out just as we reach the line. We just don't have any punch compared to everybody else or any sprint compared to anybody else. They really weren't overtaking us there. and We were holding them off and the flat seemed just fine there for a while. But when we sprinted, there was nothing additional. <laughs> there was no extra pace coming out of us there. And we just kind of held, of our, held our position. Ended up last on the group. Didn't even crack the podium fourth place uh, another good result i mean uh, it's obvious how to play these national championships races these small ones especially when you are one rider from one team and you don't have the support you get in the breakaway uh, that's the obvious thing to do and we're looking for those four riders and we got those four riders we got the circumstances we wanted these guys are just so freaking weak it is hard to get a result in a head-to-head. -head. We have reached the signing period, and it looks like they've resolved one of the bugs that existed, and that is the visibility one. We've had successes, and with those, we are at that signing day. We have an offer from Yeti Racing Team. We have a 95% evaluation for the season. Should be 100%, but let's ignore that one for a second. That 5% is not going to make a substantial difference. Three new offers have come in, a record 946,000, and then exceeding that record with 962,000, 
And finally, another at 905, which would put it outside of the top five. But the big thing is what happens with Yeti Racing Team. And well, as suggested in the comments for those who have already gotten there, it absolutely screws you over. This is without a doubt still bugged. The smallest offer that we had of 13 offers was over 800,000. The smallest. We got a 95% evaluation on an 804,000 budget. And yet we come in with just a 300,000 budget for the coming year. It's 100% broke. That is not how that is supposed to work. Without a doubt, 100% should have seen us increase our salary, our budget from the year prior. I have the ability, I have the power to accept our offer from Yeti Racing Team and then save the game, go in the, into the database editor and alter that amount. What I will alter it to is more than what it was before. We were saying 910 was fifth, but with two new offers coming in as our top two, that's bumped that list down. And I think, because again, they, they go bad, they expire, so I can't go back and look at them. I believe the fifth best offer now was 923,000. Save this, I'm gonna accept the Yeti Racing offer and then alter it from 300K to 923. It's the first signing period and we have not achieved any of our objectives yet. So we enter with the same 30 nations that we began with. The snowball has not began to accumulate. So with the initial 30, scouting, well, it's not done us much good. Remember, we're scouting around the world, not just a region. So the vast majority of the, the athletes that are turning up aren't from nations that I can sign anybody from. So in the entirety of this, I have found just two, just two 18 year old eligible signees. And one of them does have two and a half star potential, but we don't know in what or how, and really just time trial and flat, not, not good ratings. And the other one we just discovered and have a single one point revealed on them right now, not enough to judge whether they're worth signing. Therefore, we're going to go the traditional route for this first signing period. And with the finances secured, 923000 for the coming year, I'm good to sign whoever we need to sign. It's not going to be hard to sign riders. But here's the plan of attack. Right now we have 12 riders. 10 of them have expiring contracts. And I'm going to go ahead and sign 10 riders. Next year, we're going to have a continental calendar going to be a little busier than this year's was, or at least I expect it to. That's how the game normally works with that. But I'm not going to re-sign any of these expiring contracts. In the entire season, one of our 12 riders has leveled up far enough to reach half star status. Fuseni, there's that half star. That's, that's it. He's got up to a 55 sprint from 52, 53. I mean, we did race for him but he's a half star sprinter that's all we can count on not worth hanging on to so we're going to see a fresh new team in the dossiers i have targeted 17 riders from which i'm going to look to sign 10 of those there's a mixture of young and old we need to get competitive and soon can't wait for riders to develop and at the same time speaking of waiting for riders to develop these are riders coming from one one nations the quality even after they develop, it's not going to be great. We're not going to get a six-star prospect. These are not high-end potential riders. Temporary stopgap solutions. So probably one of the first times I've ever bothered to do this, I'm not looking to sign young prospects as much. There's going to be a couple prospects that I'm going to get after. But for the most part, I'm looking to sign the riders that are at or near their peak. And especially if I could find somebody who's, you know, 25 and decent and has a little bit more progression. And as these are all 1-1 nations, kind of under the umbrella of take whatever we can get. In the end, I have opted to sign 11 riders because the last two, I couldn't decide between them. They were both prospects. And I said, hey, let's give them both a shot. Give them a one-year contract and we'll see if they actually have the potential and start leveling up towards that potential. And if they do, we can sign them to a longer contract. Felt it didn't hurt us to take on one 
more. We are going to go from a zero star team to a one and a half star team next season. It's not a good team. It is not a good Continental team at all, but it's going to be a hell of a lot more competitive than the team that we've had this year. Yeah, we do have two returning riders, two mid-30-year-olds that um, will have one more year, and then they'll definitely be let go. The two prospects, Bukenya is a sprint and time trial and flat rating prospect, as is Mahmoud, and they are both already quite a bit better than what we have now. I mean, they are mid-upper 50s on their ratings. Our other big prospect is Shembri. Shembri has a similar profile to what the other two, but more so. Mokaki Mokaki is a different type of prospect with a punch slash sprint capability if he is to achieve that. He would be a pretty decent rider, but our biggest prospect of all is Sabanda. But here's the problem with Sabanda. Unlike those other four below him who are all 19 or 20 years of age, Sabanda is 25 already and two stars. Every once in a while, these come in and they're completely wrong. It's not very often. I fear Sabanda might be one of these. Something's off about the scenario. If he can develop, even if only moderately for a while, he can be the kind of rider who can win some continental races. But it's a fingers crossed move on Sabanda. The next six are all here and now prospects. Four of them a bit older and just two younger ones. So Regatta is one of the younger ones. He's an all-around kind of guy. He's a two and a half star current with three star capability. But imagine if we can hang in there and do okay in some of these races with 50 ratings. What do you think we're going to do with high 60s, mid 60s? Abdullah had almost an identical rating, but Corey Williams is more of a sprinter type. But at 30 years of age, I gave him a one year deal to help us out in a pinch but this is not somebody I want around long term and he's definitely not going to get any better where he lacks in a lot of ratings he does have a 68 sprint and acceleration I did end up signing Funsavith who's another one who's as developed as he's ever going to get and he's 33 and he's probably going to get worse as the year goes on but he starts in the upper 60s last two signings Red Walters 25 a little bit of potential left I mean this is one that you believe you look at it and go yeah I can see what this guy can be and he's close to being it and he's got some low 60s but he's got some higher 60s he's got some punch he's got some sprint he's got a acceptable cobble rating for our level and the best rated rider the top of the list is Caden Hopkins not so sure he's the top of the list what he has is one more sprint point Ooh. He's got a 69 instead of a 68, but he's not as balanced as some of the other guys. So what we really have is we've got about four or five veteran riders to lead the team to carry us to new heights because mid 60s is going to go so much farther than low 50s will. I mean, we're, we're going to be a good plus 15 points in attributes in the coming season. That does not mean anything's automatic, but it definitely means we're going to have a much better chance of doing something in the coming year, and I'm excited for it. But that is going to do it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.